Good afternoon to you. Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com here. I want to talk to you today about this whole Hurricane Track Insider and Patreon connection. What is that all about? Every time I talk about this crowdfunded project, what is the history of it? And more importantly, how can you benefit from what we're doing and get involved with it? This video will kind of introduce you to the whole concept of why I came up with this. Again, the history of it. It goes all the way back to 2005. What we are doing with it now and how you can get involved and how it can actually help you. It is different than anything else out there. And I keep emphasizing it is not a subscription service. It's not a weather website. It's like a cooperative of like-minded people. And we're in this era now of crowdfunding stuff, content, whatever, that we are interested in supporting. And Patreon allows that to happen. But before we get into that, let's go back in time a little bit to 2005. We had the old Chevy Tahoe. That was our flagship vehicle there. No longer in operation. It's gotten over a half a million miles on it. And now I just rent vehicles. I don't even need all this stuff on the roof anymore because everything has become miniaturized and smaller. And we can put so much more stuff out there. But way back then, I wanted a way to show you what I'm seeing out of my windshield. And thanks to my friend Jim Williams at HurricaneCity.com, and his friend Ross over at suncam.tv, I don't even know if suncam is still a thing, but it certainly was back then, and hurricanecity.com certainly is now. Anyway, Jim told me about this. He said, look, Ross is doing live video using a Sprint card, and I was like, well, hey, Sprint is one of our partners, one of our sponsors. I have access to any of the technology that I could possibly want for mobile broadband. Yes, you know, how do we do that? How do we do live video? So long story short, between Jim and Ross and myself, I figured out how to use Windows Media Encoder, a simple video camera tied in through what we call FireWire cable to a laptop in my vehicle, and I could stream live video in early 2005. Of course, I wanted to go beyond that. So I developed a way to do every bit of that in a box where we would get a laptop, as you can see right there, and it would use Windows Media Encoder. This was the input. This was the output. There's yours truly. There's the battery that had to power everything. That thing weighed 70 pounds. There was a VCR to record everything coming in from the video signal. It was bulky. It was heavy. But doggone it, it worked. This thing's about the size of a footlocker. The first generation of live unmanned camera. That came on in 2005. And Katrina was the very first time that we had launched it. And that's a whole other story in and of itself. So over the years, we kind of perfected it, did the best we could with the technology available. And I started a website that year in 05 that would handle all of this live streaming video because it was very expensive to produce. Still is, but for different reasons these days. Back then, just streaming video, the bandwidth, you had to pay for it. And it was very expensive. So I created a site called HurricaneLiveNet.com, and it was a sister site to HurricaneTrack.com that would handle all the live streaming video. It was never meant to be a money-making, profit-making entity or an enterprise. It was just a way to control the cost. I couldn't make it available to everybody for free because it would you know, end up costing me thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 per storm, assuming people would be interested in it. So I had to have a way to control it. So I set up this new website, Hurricane LiveNet, launched it during Katrina, and the rest, as they say, was history. That season, 2005, was very busy. By the time I got to Hurricane Rita in September of 05, a lot of people knew about it, and it turns out that they were interested in it. It was revolutionary. It was different, but it was still bulky. The video bit rate was low. The actual frame size of the video was, was pretty bad you know, compared to where we are now. There was no audio except from the Tahoe cam. The remote cams didn't have audio, but it worked. And by the time we got to Wilma, at the end of 05, it really paid off with some very dramatic video from Everglades City that kind of put me on the map, so to speak. You know, If you know the story during Katrina, we lost all of the boxes. There's actually a documentary about it that I'll tell you about in a minute. But over the years, we progressed and kept at it, the different people that worked with me. And I had Lowe's and Sprint as big partners. But in 2008, the economy collapsed. Those partnerships basically went away. And I was on my own, having to figure out how to keep doing this, 
going forward. Now, let's fast forward a few years. In early 2014, one of our partners, uh, Kerry Mallory, he uh, passed away last year, unfortunately, but he was a great friend of the project. He and I worked together to figure out the next generation of these cameras. And again, trying to compress this into a short a story as possible, that is the result. And the modern day version of that old box that you can see my friend Mike Watkins, that's him right there, Mike Watkins, HurricaneAnalytics.com. There's yours truly, about 50 pounds heavier than I am now. <laughs> My, how things have changed. And, you know, the boxes were heavier too. Isn't that funny how that works? That big old box, we were setting this up for Hurricane Isaac on one of the canals in New Orleans. Now, they are small, about the size of an oversized briefcase, and we have a whole bunch of these. Our goal was to provide live video from point blank range to the worst hurricane effects that we could possibly imagine, giving the public, the media, emergency management, and just general weather geeks a front row seat to what happens, and it's safe. We still have to set them up, we still have to go where the hurricane is, so it's not completely safe, but it's better than staying there. I mean, you know, if you know our Hurricane Michael video, that was a Category 5, and there's no way to stay right there on the beachfront in a Cat 5, and sometimes even in a Cat 2, to document what is happening. It's important to document this stuff. There are famous hurricane chasers that do this for a living as well. Some of them for a living, some of them for a hobby, and kind of a combination of the two. But for me, this is my business. I built the HurricaneTrack.com website starting in 1999, and over the years, that has grown. This is what it looks like now. And it has gone through many different iterations of having a blog, WordPress, sponsored by Lowe's, Sprint, other sponsors. Now we are in the age of crowdfunding through Patreon. And that is how we crowdfund this entire project. What is Patreon? Patreon is a website, patreon.com, and an app that allows you to become a patron of a project. Very much like in the William Shakespeare days of plays, there would be patrons, and we even have that now. When there's a big production, Broadway or community theater, they'll say, this is sponsored by uh, whoever, and they'll name some local business or maybe sometimes a large nationally known brand. Those become the sponsors or the patrons of a particular art. And this is the same thing for Patreon, except it takes it to the little guy that somebody can put in. Maybe they're a big fan of a poet, a blogger, a musician, an anime creator, or somebody in the weather like me. And you say, you know, yeah, there's a lot of people follow this. What if we want to grow it and we create a cooperative, a membership base, and we charge five, ten, twenty dollars a month minimum? and we get as many people as possible to fund it. I mean, you know the idea of crowdfunding. Hopefully I'm telling you something you already know, but just in case, that's what it's all about, the power of numbers. So instead of having one big corporate sponsor, and then, you know, kind of the strings that are attached to that, got to mention them all the time, that's, you know, it's nice to have people involved, because not only are they crowdfunding it with this monthly membership, but they have the ability to donate equipment as well and have a literal hands-on approach. Example, these Raspberry Pi computers that are in a lot of our camera boxes now transmit weather data. They're about $99 each with all the components. Every one of these was gifted by one of our crowdfunding partners. Somebody out there bought these and sent them in. Same thing with these little Kestrels. We have over 30 of these that we can deploy in a hurricane, that's the Super Bowl of all of this weather, if you will, but other storms, winter storms, tornado events, the desert monsoon, flood events, anything where we want to immerse you in what is happening, but also to measure what is happening. I've always been a fan of that. So these were crowdfunded. The batteries that run everything. Remember that big old honking battery I showed you in the earlier picture? This takes the place of it. I kid you not. These lithium battery packs, they're, you know, $100, $130 each, but this will run our equipment. One of these will run, will run one camera for as long as 40 hours. 
and the larger version of those will run those cameras for 80 hours. That's three days plus. We've come a long way since the days of having to take stuff like this, lug it around, set it up. Um, now we have the, uh, and let me just go back to the Tahoe. We used to take this wind tower. You see it right there. It was an aluminum wind tower, five meters. We'd have to set it up, guy wire it, set up an anemometer, the big box at the bottom of it. Now we have this, these crowdfunded clamp systems that uh, the DOT uses to put signs up on jersey walls or the side railings of bridges. And we just retrofitted it for our anemometer system. There's the box with the Raspberry Pi and the uh, Verizon internet connection. We use Verizon now. Here's some of our other equipment. This was back during Laura a year ago, ironically, that I'm putting this particular video together. It's August 26th that I'm cutting this video, in case you're wondering. And there's one of our camera boxes right there. You get the idea. It's all been miniaturized, and we have a lot of it. And the idea is to give you the data and the front row seat so that you know what is happening. And it is wildly successful. Michael, in 2018, kind of was the rebirth of all of this. We had been going through the years with a couple of pretty good success stories, but Michael was it. Daytime landfall, Cat 5 hurricane, five camera systems, we have 20 now, right on the front row of everything from Cedar Key all the way over to Panama City. And if you haven't seen the Michael documentary that we put together, you must. I'll talk about that towards the end. So that's what we do. That's what the crowdfunding supports. And it's done through Patreon. How? Well, we connected it to HurricaneTrack.com. We used to use PayPal. And we had a system where you would sign up through PayPal and you would get charged either a month or a year. And that was it. It was kind of like, you pay us, you pay me, and you get something. This is much more interactive because Patreon allows me to then create posts, blog posts, if you will. And here's just a few of them as of late that the patrons see. You know, I can post these anywhere from my phone. I can post them from the web interface and people can comment. It's like our own little closed social media world not available to the negativity and the trolls that are out there on the wild side, if you will. Some of it we can make public, sure, but this is our own little encapsulated world called Patreon. And we have over 670 members right now, uh, as well as about 30 or 40 legacy members of that old Hurricane Live Net site that I was telling you about that still get billed through PayPal. The bottom line is, it is a crowd-funded project. And in the end, the result is nothing short of extraordinary. And what do I mean by that? If you've never seen it, well, allow me to show you. And if you're familiar with it, let me brag. All right? You log in from the HurricaneTrack.com homepage using your email address that you get when you become a patron on Patreon or your old PayPal address. Uh, if you were a PayPal legacy subscriber, you remember, you know how to do it. So that's what we've done. We've connected the two, Patreon, through your membership, starting at $10 a month to 25 and you just get different benefits depending on what is best for you. So you take that, you log in, and then you get here to the home page of our Hurricane Track Insider site. That's just what I wanted to name it. You're on the inside. It's a clever name. You know, it's kind of like I said, or, you know, Hurricane Track Plus, Disney Plus, Apple Plus, whatever. Ours is called Hurricane Track Insider. Here, I do a little blog. We have the Twitter feed embedded. Whenever we have a live cam going, the featured cam is here. And this is a list on our own chat of all of our different members. There's Mike. Here is Javier, known as Hurricane 78 or Her 78. There's Carissa and Bash. Ralph, Brent, he's coming up to help me out. There's Andrew. There's Barbara. Barbara's been here since day one. Thank you, Barbara. You get it? These are real people. These are people that are funding this, but they also benefit from it. What do you get from the home page? Well, my pride and joy, honestly, is this. I am a geographer, an earth scientist in geography focusing on hurricanes. I'm not a meteorologist. I don't have a degree in meteorology, so I'm not technically a meteorologist. I'm more of a hurricanologist, but that name doesn't really exist. I study the effects of hurricanes. I like maps, and I want to show people the impacts and help people better prepare 
for those impacts using our technology, creating this closed loop of education, research, observation, and it just goes on and on and on, right? The map is my pride and joy. Good friend of ours of the project, Will Woodgate from the UK, designed this for us based on my recommendations. I'm the producer, if you will, like here's what I want to have happen, just like a movie producer, assembles the people to make the movie happen. I'm the producer, Will was the sort of creator, the uh, visual effects guy, that's the analogy, and this map is absolutely extraordinary. The layers on it are beyond, I mean, he literally took what was in my brain, uh, I sent him sketches and ideas, Photoshop mock-ups, and this is the end result. This interactive map, we have our cameras that are on here, this is down at St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, we've been able to embed the cameras. This is one of our patrons and supporters out in Black Forest, Colorado. This is up in Port Orchard in Washington State. Well, it's not on at the moment. He's got like this interesting wildlife cam that when he turns it on, we get to see it. Out in Nevada, in the desert, we took one of our sensors that I showed you, that Kestrel, and one of our Raspberry Pis and sent it out there. It's 99 degrees. I guess it's baked the camera. Uh, there it is. It takes a little while to get it to pull up, but there it is. That's the desert. That's what we do just on any given day. But when there is a hurricane or another big ticket weather event, the map becomes your key to seeing where the action is. So all along the path, for example, of soon to be Ida, we'll have these cameras all along here. And you can tune in and click on them and watch. I'm just speculating here. This is just an example. This will be populated with cameras and those weather stations that I was showing you. Um, that one right there. These, we're going to have three of these set up and 20 of these other camera systems. That map is truly an exceptional product. And for you that are already on board, I need to show you something really important. We don't have an app anymore. An app is cumbersome, costly for me to maintain, and not the best use of my money to pay somebody to, and your money too, because you're funding this, to keep it maintained. Android, iOS, it doesn't work, it's not working, it's crashing, you got people that try to negative review it just to bring you down. So I got rid of the app. It was called Hurricane Impact. No good. Don't want to do that. Instead, let's figure out a way that you can use the Hurricane Track Insider interface and have kind of like a web app. What do I mean by that? Check this out. If you go on the uh, tracking map, and you scroll down to the bottom over here after you open this part up. Look at the very bottom. First of all, look at all this other stuff you can do. I mean, it's incredible what Will baked in. But that right there is your little secret shortcut. When you access the Insider site on mobile, tablet or iPhone or Android or whatever, not the desktop, but when you do it on mobile, it says pin to home screen. That is your new best friend. What does it look like? Hopefully my iPhone will show up pretty well on the screen. Right there, there's a little icon. It says tracking map. It looks like an app. You see it right there? It says tracking map, that little Hurricane Track logo. You tap on it. If you're logged in, it logs you in to the map, and there you go, right on your phone, simulating a web app. You tap on any of those cameras. They pop up. Voila. You see what's going on. Oh, that's down in uh, Orange Park. Michael Hurd, your camera isn't turned on. So let's check Bradenton Beach, or Bradenton, Florida. There you go. Everything pops up right there. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. You can screenshot it. Send something to your friends, your family. That's how you do it. One little shortcut for you. We'll set that up. So it's really easy to do. Pin to the home screen. It logs you in. If you're not logged in, it'll tell you to log in using your email address and you're good to go. So a little shortcut for you there, all right? Get rid of me, show you a couple of other things. The dashboard, oh my goodness, I've had this from day one. Started out with four cameras back in 05, now we have as many as 20. This is the, uh, when you click on live cams, this is where you go, right here. And it's the landing page for the live cams. Every one of these, you can mouse over. <laughs> that's my garage, that's funny. Um, and all the different cameras that are currently active. Then you've got the digital dashboard where everything is located. Eight of them set up now. 
nine, ten, whatever it is, we're going to add more for Ida to be. Um, this is unbelievable. I mean, nothing like this anywhere with the interactivity, the Twitter embedded, the radar of the local area. We're anticipating what's going to be happening with Ida to be. Uh, and then the chat. People can chat with each other, see what's going on. It's all right there on our digital dashboard. A remarkable tool. You can take these cameras too, by the way. Just wanted to remind you in case you didn't know. Good example, the one down here in Freeport, Texas. Make it full screen. And then you hit escape, it goes bye-bye. You want to hear the audio? Well, we don't have audio there because this is out on someone's porch. Um, some very nice people that have helped set this up for us. Let's see if William has audio. Nope, and that makes sense because you got to have your privacy. But these go full screen, especially during a hurricane mission. They do have audio, and you can hear the wind and the waves and everything else that's going on. So all the cameras that are embedded on these pages can go full screen like that. Just a remarkable, remarkable thing. You also have the opportunity off the home page here, uh, where'd it go, to track where I am. And that would be right here. It's not active right now because I'm not going anywhere. But it'll say track mark via APRS, a way to know where I am. And our members can see where I am. Where's Mark in relation to everything else? We call that APRS. There's an app that I use called APRS.FI. It's got an app, and I have a call sign that is tied into that, so you can track me on the ground. And we, of course, use that for our weather balloon project as well when we launch one of our weather balloons, hopefully, into the eye of a hurricane sometime. That's a whole other project. Elsewhere along the main menu at the top here, um, let me get back to it. Sorry. Let me get rid of some of these. That'll help me keep up with what's what. Elsewhere along the main menu, podcast. Yes, I have an original podcast series. That's right here. It's called Stories from the Hurricane Highway. Two seasons of it already. This is literally like a book on tape. Move me back up here. Season one, how I got started. And then every story that, you know, like, a, like we're all just sitting around the dinner table and I'm just yammering away telling you all my stories. That's the podcast. It is not available anywhere at all except on the Hurricane Track Insider site. A special kind of um, look into how I did all this. You know, a long, long story of all these different stories of what we call the Hurricane Highway, exclusive to our supporters on the Hurricane Track Insider site. You just click on podcast episodes. There it is. Original documentaries. This is special. I've done the Tracking the Hurricanes going all the way back to 2004. Um, and this is all of our stuff. It's like our own little Netflix, if you will. Yeah, it's a little magnanimous to say that, but you get the idea. This is all of our documentaries embedded into one page. Our library going all the way back to 04. This is 05 through 08. Down here somewhere, there's 08, part one and two. Then I took a few years off, kind of rediscovering everything, dealing with the loss of the sponsorships. Came back in 2016, produced another documentary, which was in two parts. And then 2017, Irma, Harvey, yeah. One of the best ones, though, was the Tracking the Hurricanes 2018, and the director's cut available right here on the original documentaries tab. You want to binge watch all of the stuff that we've done? It's all right here, and even a little short that I put together from the Desert Southwest, one of my favorite places. The newest project is this new series. If you're going to do a two-hour movie, well, you might as well start doing a series, right? It's harder. And it's called The Hurricane Highway. And it's literally a crowd-funded original series, exclusive. Once they start rolling out, we put the episodes on Patreon first and the Hurricane Track Insider site. And then we eventually make it available to the masses on... YouTube, people at the $25 level and up, I put your name in the credits as one of our supporters. You know, there's a lot of crowdfunded independent films out there, so this is nothing new. But this is the new season. I've got three episodes done. Season one, or season two, episodes one, two. I gotta add the third one. I'm getting behind. But episode one from season one through episode eight, remarkable stuff there covering the 2019 season. Yes, it's all on here, exclusive for you guys. I'm slowly building Season 2, and of course, everything for Season 3 
is happening now. A new original series that I've been working on. It's a lot of fun. I even do my own music. There's a synthesizer workstation over here to my right. I was a music major. Well, you got to watch the first episode of the Hurricane Highway, and you'll see. I was in music first, and then went into geography and weather, and I still do the music. I score my own music, literally composing it on these synthesizers, in case you didn't know that. So this is something very special to me, because it's a way to show you what we did that year, and it's like a retrospective, a look back. So this new series, The Hurricane Highway, crowdfunded by you fine folks on your end. So basically, that is what we do. And again, how to get involved, it's through Patreon. It's a website, patreon.com slash hurricane track. That's our specific address, patreon.com slash hurricane track. It is also an app. You can get the Patreon app. You search Hurricane Track, Hurricane T-R-A-C-K. You select the membership level, the $1. We're not even doing the $1 level anymore. There was just not much I could do with it. And I felt like it's worth $10 a month for what we're doing, which is unique. In the whole world, nobody is doing anything like this. So you can enter at $10 a month. You can go to $25. The $100 uh, tier is sold out. Uh, we only have 10 slots there. Because it's exclusive. It's the producer level. I list your name as a producer of the Hurricane Highway. One of the ways that I can thank you for supporting. And then we have the business side. And we haven't had anybody join this yet. I haven't pitched it very much. But yeah, you can join up as a business. And I will at least mention you on social media. Different than a sponsorship. It's more like I say earlier when you know we had plays and you have a, hey, I want to thank you know, Acme Heating and Air for helping to support our production today. That's what that's available uh, for. And there are six of those. So if you're a business and you want to become a business patron, we still have those six slots open. But a majority of the people, I mean, $10 a month, you know, that's nothing. Uh, not today. I mean, we, we spend more on a latte or a fast food meal. Come on. It's worth it. And you get to be part of something remarkable. You help shape the future of it. We all interact with each other. You make of it what you wish, and we can grow it into something even bigger than what we've got now. I might be the front man of the band, so to speak. This whole hurricane track thing, I started it. Most of these are my ideas, but it is you all on your side of your screen, whatever you're watching me from, that have helped to shape this over the last several years. And some of you going back, 15, 16 years even, a really remarkable thing. So that's what the history of it is. I know this is a little long, but I wanted to tell you more about it because some people think, ah, it's just begging for money. Well, if you think that, that's all right. You're entitled to your opinion. But if you get on the inside and you really look at what we're doing, I think you'll agree it is one of the most remarkable uses of this new power of crowdfunding that you will find anywhere. All right, that is it from me. I'm going to post this for you. Check it out, patreon.com slash hurricane track. Look forward to having you on the inside. Be a part of something incredible. Help shape its future. I appreciate it. All of the supporters appreciate it because it helps build these Lego blocks, if you will, one at a time. And the end result is something truly innovative, science-based, and you can help shape the future of it. I'm Mark Sutter. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day.